So today I'm going to be answering your questions about the Korean TESOL and Linguistics course at York St. John's University. Uh, I hope these answers help. They're very simplistic, but um, I'm sure you'll get a gist. And if you have any other questions, feel free to put them in the comment section and I'll answer them further. Or I'll probably do a detailed video directly answering those questions for you. But yeah, anyway, here are the questions and the answers. I did not experience any loneliness as I couldn't wait to gain my own independence but one thing you can do to distract yourself from loneliness is planning things with your friends, your new flatmates and experience York. To be honest I didn't really plan any of my uni work in first year but I definitely learned from that. At the start of second year I found out what my assessments were in the first semester and I decided to begin planning my ideas and doing a little bit of research within the first two weeks of starting. So yeah, I definitely recommend planning your um, assessments rather than just going and leaving it for the last minute. In my first year I had a total of three hours of Korean and three hours of English slash TESOL um, a week. Uh, it is likely you'll have at least one day off or one to two days where you have only one lesson in that day. This didn't really change in second year to be honest with you. The most uncommon thing about university that I didn't know at first was that you can't stay in their accommodation for the rest of your uni experience. You can only stay in their accommodation for first year. So. I recommend finding a house with a group of people for your second year and for your third year because it makes it much easier to find a house. In my own opinion, York St. John's University is a pretty decent university actually. I like it because the staff are friendly and the students are friendly and there's been nothing inconvenient as of yet. Um, when it comes to accommodation, if you like homely places, I definitely recommend Lime's Court accommodation. But if you like living with a bigger group, then I recommend the other accommodations. They're also good too. Christmas time here in York is absolutely beautiful. I remember going on a 2am walk with my housemates and we got to see the Christmas lights on the Minster and on other places around the city at night. And it was absolutely beautiful. You also get to see the lovely Christmas markets that come to York. They're full of unique food and handmade products, which I'm sure you enjoy looking at. For me, the first week was all about unpacking my stuff and finding out what I didn't bring and going out to buy what I didn't bring. <laughs> but I did make a lot of friends during the first few weeks and I definitely experienced a lot within the first few weeks as well, which I'm sure you will do too. Abroad, you are mainly prepared for that in the second year, like the first semester. Um, but I definitely recommend spending your first year planning where you want to go to. So have a look at the universities, and I'll put a link below in the description for that where you can find those. And I definitely recommend saving up a lot of money to be able to go. You do get a student loan, which is a decent price, but if you want to be able to buy flights and visas, then you'll have to save up your own money before you get to go to any you know, study abroad year. Um, there's other things that they don't tell you, they leave you to plan your flights and your visas by yourself and you also don't get to decide on your university that you go to, they decide for you but you can put in your preference by filling in the preference sheet that they send out before you go. I haven't experienced any drama in university compared to how it used to be in high school and college so I'd say people are definitely a lot mature in university than they were back in high school and college. For first year accommodations such as Lions Court, you get the accommodation from September to July the next year. Uh, you are not required to go home at any point but people do go home for Christmas and New Year so that's completely up to you if you want to go home for that time. the most enjoyable part of my course is the Korean classes. You get to focus on all aspects of Korean and I think that's what I enjoyed most. So each week you get 
an hour and a half of learning grammar and vocabulary and then another an hour and a half of practicing your reading and your speaking which was definitely really helpful for me. Any hacks for students? Well, I would definitely make sure to take all your cutlery and your kitchen stuff out of the sink and out from around the kitchen, put them in your cupboards because they will go missing if you leave them around. I went to Lions Court with four teaspoons, four forks, four knives and four big spoons. And I left Lions Court with one knife, one fork, four teaspoons luckily and four big spoons luckily, but God knows how that happened. As someone who's never had a job before I came to university, I relied a lot on my parents, but I am very thankful to have parents who helped me out until I found myself a job. I eventually found myself a job at the end of my first year, but I am still in that job at the moment and it was definitely fate that I found that job. But I definitely recommend saving up as much money as you can, especially for your study abroad. The more money, the better. As for examples of my own university work, I'll put a link in the description to a Google Drive with examples of my Korean assessments from my first year and from the start of my second year. This way you can look at them in your own time and hopefully they'll help you for your future assessments. Since starting university, my Korean proficiency level has definitely increased. It's gotten so much better than it was when I was studying it by myself. However, the benefits of studying by myself prior to coming to university is that I already knew the alphabet, I knew basic grammar, I knew other essentials that were needed for the first few lessons of Korean. They do teach you the basics if you are at a very lower level or just a complete beginner, but I definitely recommend learning the alphabet, that is a big essential and it's very, very beneficial for when you're learning at university standards.